higher amount and that the price of infinity price of nothing is taught, thought to be now another such a paradox another such a story was uh, achilles and tortoise achilles was a that fastest of infinity runner is uh, at that time we and we know the motion of tortoise and if they have a race at a point time we and ahead of him we know the and if the race starts and they start moving at the same time point time we then ahead of him we know the if the race anyone can thought starts moving at the same time point time obviously achilles will will the race but if we have some as a options at the that same time point time. obviously um, we, we, uh, the following but if we have the facts as if we assume these facts the same time, a point is the last indestructible point of a line if we smallest part of as if a line these facts the distance that a point is the last any anyone can cover a unit distance that is smallest distance is a point that a point and in that any distance, distance is covered a unit distance by smallest a unit of time that is called as an instant is the last indestructible part of time distance is covered. that is also distance acceptable smallest a unit of but this called as an instant is the third one indestructible that part of bigger line has more points distance acceptable smallest a unit of but this that is also uh, seems to be obvious uh, bigger at those days more points acceptable uh, in in those days but that is also uh, seems to be obvious uh, and because of this third is fact uh, which is which later on but that is uh, found uh, seems to be to be incorrect that uh, achilles has to cover more points found than seems to be to be the tortoise and that uh, therefore he could not win he has to cover more points found the race because if he covers tortoise and um, some distance for in some part has to cover uh, in some part of time because if he covers some instant of time uh, then some distance for in tortoise will also move uh, in some part to the next because if point some instant of in the unit then in that instant at that instant also move and therefore if this continues to the next then point some instant. it is impossible it becomes impossible for at that instant this uh, achilles to win the race this is a geno's uh, paradox and many mathematicians many philosophers thought over it and they could not give sufficient explanation for this many mathematicians many now there is another such a paradox uh, question asked by galileo explanation and which were again mathematicians uh, not acceptable not uh, convince he could not convince by galileo the society at that time that uh, a set of natural numbers 1 2 3 and so on up to n and so continues to the continues that time um then a set of natural numbers 1 2 3 and a set of their squares 1 square 2 square 3 square 4 uh, n square and so on and therefore it is obvious that the set of squares 1 4 9 and so on n square and so on forms and therefore a part of this set of natural numbers 1 2 3 and so on 4 9 and so on but still n square and so on a part of even if it is a proper subset of set of natural numbers but still Uh, they have same number of elements proper it is observed that they have same number of elements both have infinite number of elements same number and therefore this uh, this happens observed that but elements both have infinite this fact was not convinced not therefore uh, uh, accepted observed that but in those days because uh, the general truth is that was not convinced not part cannot be greater than but in those days or equal to the whole the whole is always greater than cannot be greater than it part but in those days or equal now another such a another uh, paradox another uh, such a story was uh, 
given by Bertrand Russell, philosophy, philosophical, philosophy, mathematician, philosopher and mathematician, given by Bertrand Russell. He has raised many paradoxes regarding set theory, mathematician, and because of those paradoxes, the foundation of set theory sets, definition of set has to be modified. Now, in those days, the foundation of set there was uh, one uh, character in novel uh, of uh, one author, Tristram Shandy. Tristram Shandy was a character and uh, his life was full of events and every day he performs different types of um, uh, his acts, full of then adventures, and every day um, he performs uh, different types events, he cover uh, events, uh, and so on. His Many his life was full of events, every day, uh, as described uh, by this events. author. He cover events, and, and so on. Um, Many if his life was full of uh, one has to describe. Uh, by this day's uh, event, one day's uh, event, then his life was full it would require to describe uh, uh, one year to complete uh, the description of his event. Uh, it would description of those events uh, in uh, one day. One year to complete the description of and his event. And for uh, one, uh, events to cover events of one day, he requires uh, one year. Then. That is the problem uh, was the question was whether he can finish one year his biography the problem because if he has to cover his biography he requires one year in those uh, in that one year also he has many events again here he requires number of years to cover um, also uh, those particular events happening in that year and so on and therefore theoretically it it becomes impossible to write his biography happening in that year so on in his lifetime theoretically it it becomes impossible now, to write his biography in that year so on guido grandi he was again a mathematician uh, of 17th and 18th century and he has given one interesting exercise uh, of that all we know in the alternating series 1 minus 1 1 plus 1 minus 1 and so on that is s it is an alternating series it is neither convergent one minus one one plus one it is not convergent but it is an oscillatory series it is neither not uh, absolutely convergent series it is not convergent but it is an oscillatory and he started with uh, this alternating series and by different arrangements now in the first arrangement he just put brackets 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 and each bracket has value 0 so that the natural value is 0 but if uh, we adjust the terms in a different way that plus 1 then minus 1 plus 1 0 by associative property for addition we can do this and uh, again each bracket minus 1 has value 0 and therefore, By finally, because of this first uh, one term, do this. Uh, the sum is again uh, one. Uh, again, each bracket then has value zero. And therefore, again, uh, we can take one more one, one outside the bracket. Uh, the sum is again uh, one. Again, each bracket and has value uh, we can rearrange the terms. We can take one more so that one the sum can also be equal to two. And, and therefore, by con uh, continuing in this way, terms, it is possible one more so that one, two the sum can also uh, write to two. this sum s. And therefore, by con uh, continuing in this way, possible to write the terms of this series s such that uh, s is equal to zero, s is equal to one, s is equal to two, s can be three, and so on. Possible that all positive integers could be derived from this s. One s is equal to two, s can now again might slightly different arrangement could be derived instead of one minus one one minus one we can take minus one outside slightly uh, this bracket 
and write one minus one, one minus one, and so on. The sum we can can be minus one also equal to minus one. Now similarly, it can be minus two, minus three, and so on. All negative numbers could be derived from S to minus one. Now further, we have one expression on all negative numbers expansion uh, one upon one plus x or one plus x raised to minus one, and we know that it is also an alternating series one minus x plus x square minus x cube and so on. For x is equal to one plus x raised to minus one, and we know that it is also an alternating. We get one minus one upon one plus one that is one by two and so on is equal to one minus one plus one minus one and so on is equal to s. So that s can also be equal to. Is uh, one minus one plus one minus by one. multiplying both S sides one by minus one. Yes, so we get minus one half is equal to minus one plus one minus one plus one and so on, which is again s, and therefore s can also be equal to minus one half. Yes, we get and therefore uh, all positive integers, all negative integers, all fractions, positive fractions, negative fractions, and ultimately uh, all rational numbers, all negative integers could be derived from s. Positive fractions and therefore Grandi and ultimately vision. Was that concept was that thought he thought that from S. the original and natural value of S is zero, and out of this vision, S out of this zero, he thought that we can from obtain natural value of S is zero, all integers, all rational numbers. entirely created by s whose natural value is zero and therefore the world he say he, he claims that the world is created out of nothing now the famous mathematician leon hart euler also could not explain some of the um, flaws some of the uh, fallacies about infinity. Now he started with infinite series one upon one plus x square, that is one plus x raised to minus two, and all we know that it is its binomial expansion is one minus two x plus three x square minus four x cube and so on. Put x is equal to minus one in this series, that gives one upon zero which is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on that this uh, infinite series of natural numbers it is equal to 1 upon 0 now if we write 1 upon 0 if we assume that 1 upon 0 is infinity then this is uh, somewhat acceptable expression that this infinite sum is not finite it is infinity the Euler, uh, it was Euler first who used this symbol for infinity and therefore we get infinity as 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on up to infinity. Now again start with another series 1 upon 1 minus x that is equal to 1 plus x plus x square that is uh, expansion of 1 upon uh, 1 minus x raised to minus 1 and in this expression if we put x is equal to 2 then we get minus 1 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 and so on up to infinity now 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 it is a part uh, a, a, a of this uh, infinite series of natural numbers and also the corresponding terms are greater than the terms of this uh, series of natural numbers and therefore by comparing their uh, the two sides Euler's claim that Euler's argument that minus 1 is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 and so on up to infinity is greater than 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 because corresponding terms are higher and we know that this sum is infinity but this sum is minus 1 and therefore this fallacy cannot be uh, explained uh, could, uh, he could not explain this fallacy this uh, why this is uh, true, why this happens or why this is coming and therefore he thought that there there are two types of negative numbers one having value less than zero and others having values greater than infinity that minus one is greater than infinity 
Um, now uh, we know all we know that a real line to the left we have um, negative numbers to the right we have positive numbers but Euler's arrangement of numbers in those days was like this starting from zero and then uh, positive numbers goes on increasing and up to infinity and again after infinity we have num some numbers negative numbers which are greater than infinity and some negative numbers which are less than zero. Uh, see, all we know that this is not true or the Euler's uh, explanation was not correct or uh, his uh, the convergence about the series is also uh, uh, not properly explained by Euler and therefore all this happens because of uh, lack of um, proper understanding of the concept of infinity. Now, not only Euler, but several mathematicians like Newton, uh, Bernoulli, Euler, Lagrange struggled with this concept of infinity. Now, how to answer those paradoxes or how to solve such a, uh, questions without the proper uh, explanation about infinity, one could not uh, solve all these paradoxes. And therefore, the Cantor was the first who proposed the some ideas and based on his principles, the concept of infinity was um, properly explained. All those paradoxes were properly answered. Now first, while counting or while uh, explaining the number of elements in the set, which he technically called as cardinality of the set, number of elements in that set, for counting he used the principle of one-to-one -one correspondence that two sets have same number of elements if there is one-to-one -one correspondence. Two sets, uh, see this idea of one-to-one -one correspondence was uh, used by uh, illiterate persons also. A shepherd, while counting his sheep, he, uh, he, he doesn't know counting, but still he has uh, uh, stones, he collected his stones and uh, for counting, for counting, uh, for one sheep, he count, uh, he put one stone there. So that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of stones and set of sheep. If any stone is left, he will understand that some sheep is missing. That one-to-one -one correspondence, it is a logical or it is uh, without uh, much uh, um, mathematics. One can understand that two sets have same number of elements if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence. Now for infinite sets, what happens is that for infinite sets, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence with its proper subset. And if it is true, if it is true, if for any set, if we have one-to-one -one correspondence with its proper set, its proper subset, then such a set must be an infinite set. This is how he defined, he introduced the concept of infinite sets. Now, the set of natural numbers is infinite and therefore he call any set which is in one to one correspondence with the set of natural numbers as infinite set but countably infinite set because natural numbers are countable 1 2 3 4 and so on so probably uh, that is the reason why he has used the countably infinite set infinity of count uh, infinity of countable sets and for the, for that countably infinite set, 
he assumed that its cardinality, that number of elements in infinite set as uh, Aleph not n zero. Now, next question is that is there a set which has more num more elements than n zero, more elements than Aleph not? That uh, set of natural numbers itself is infinity, but whether there is a set having more number of elements than this infinite set. Now again, the answer is yes, and uh, he explained this like this. That his Cantor's theorem state that for any set G, PG or power set of G is always uh, cardinality of power set of G. Number of elements in power set of G is always greater than number of elements in G for finite or infinite set. That power set of any set has more number of elements. And therefore, any set cannot be in one to one correspondence with its power set. Now, using this uh, theorem, using this uh, uh, concept, if we apply this to set of natural numbers, then power set of n is the set which has more number of elements than the set of natural numbers. Cardinality of power set of n is greater than cardinality of n. There is one to one correspondence between a set of real numbers and the power set of set of natural numbers. And therefore, set of real numbers, its cardinality is same as the set of cardinality of power set of n. Now, if n has n zero number of elements, its power set has 2 raised to n zero number of elements, 2 raised to Aleph naught number of elements, and he give another symbol that is C for that, that cardinality of real numbers, real numbers has number of elements in set of real numbers is C, cardinality of R is C, R has C number of elements, C is also infinity, but he call this infinity as infinity of uncountable sets or uncountable infinity. That uh, first he has countable infinity that is n0, another infinity is uncountable infinity which is an infinity of real numbers that is c and this cardinality of set of real numbers that is c is greater than is higher than the cardinality of set of natural numbers c is strictly greater than this n0 n0 is also infinity countable infinity c is also infinity that is uncountable infinity but Cantor's vision Cantor propose that this uncountable infinity is greater than the countable infinity now this fact that infinite means infinite there is no more or less in case of infinity how can we uh, how can there be uh, two types of um, infinities and again there is a comparison one is smaller and other is uh, larger and these facts were not properly understood by the contemporary mathematician and they gave no acceptance or uh, rather uh, strong rejection of these ideas <laughs> But Cantor continues and because of the, those uh, humility, uh, he uh, was ad admitted to some, he has to go under, uh, undergo uh, treatment in the hospital. Uh, uh, and after recovering, again continued his work about his ideas, about his uh, concepts concepts about infinity. Now he continue his work. Uh, again, he answer, asked one more question. Is there a set having more number of elements than C or whether C is the uh, only uh, uncountable infinity is the um, uh, uh, only second type of only, uh, infinity or whether there are only two types of infinities. But that is not, not true. He continued like this 
yes there is uh, since power set of a has more number of elements than set a therefore the power set of r has more number of elements than the elements of r and therefore if c is the cardinality of real numbers then 2 raised to c is the cardinality of power set of r and which is also greater than c and therefore now we have countable infinity lf not then uncountable infinity c then 2 raised to c now if we continue like this then 2 raised to 2 raised to c and so on up to infinity and therefore um, there are uh, 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 there are infinitely many types of infinities and each type of infinity is greater than some type of infinities or less than some type of infinities now the um uh, application or some problems faced one such a problem faced by uh, uh, in those days how to deal with infinity now we know the exact answers of those questions infinity minus infinity whether it is zero or infinity raised to infinity or infinity upon infinity what are the answers of such a uh, expressions and therefore uh, if we uh, take one such a concept that 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on up to infinity divided by 2 plus 2 plus 2 and so on up to infinity then what will be the answer the most uh, most of the uh, people uh, who particularly don't know about infinity will answer that uh, it is equal to one half but if it is equal to one half that if you take two common from the denominator then it will be one plus one plus one and so on infinity divided by one plus one plus one and so on up to infinity and into one half so that that gets cancelled and is equal to one by two then uh, you can observe that this numerator is also infinity the denominator also has a, is infinity and if you cancel them then you treat this infinity as if it is a number but it is not true the infinity is a vision it is not it is a concept it is not a number so uh, uh, if we ask uh, if we ask one question that what is truth divided by travel then nobody can answer this because truth is not a number travel is not a number and we only know how to divide two numbers infinity is not a number and therefore infinity divided by infinity cannot be answered and therefore this is just this above above ratio is just um, an undefined concept. The simplest effect Cantor used is the concept of one-to-one -one correspondence and he used this concept of one-to-one -one correspondence to explain the notion of infinity. His explanation was so perfect that it resolved centuries long paradoxes and made the journey of mathematics research more rigorous. Further mathematics and its concepts, because now it becomes a full um, logical uh, part, logical explanation, and it can be used in almost all branches of knowledge, philosophy, economics, sciences, social sciences, and so on. See, that was the contribution of uh, this great mathematician George Cantor. I once again thank all the participants for my uh, 
patience listening of this um, topic most of the concepts you may already know but the cantor was the first who solved this um, he he gave a proper and correct explanation of uh, the ideas about infinity which explains all those previous paradoxes thank you thank you so much sir now i would like to request mr td suryoshi to propose out of thanks of this session good afternoon all honorable dignitaries and most valued resource person of first session of one day national online seminar on applied mathematics i am mr suryoshi td here to give vote of thanks it's my privilege to propose vote of thanks on behalf of bhavan college vita we want to express our gratitude to honorable resource person dr bapat ms sir who has spared his precious time for us and graced the occasion and motivating us by giving such a informative lecture on infinity world before canter finally our special thanks goes to all participants thanks all of you now we will start a second session uh, by resource person dr mrs sarita thakkar thank you good morning to all the participants and organizers of one day online seminar on applied mathematics i congratulate ray shikshan sansthal balavan college vita for arranging such seminar i thank the organizers of this online seminar for giving me an opportunity to present some work on fourier series this is the first time i am delivering lecture in online mode today i am going to talk on fourier series as the name suggests fourier series was introduced by fourier fourier was a french mathematician exerted strong influence on the mathematical physics through his work analytical theory of heat he showed how the conduction of heat in solid bodies may be analyzed in terms of infinite mathematical series now called by his name the fourier series fourier began his work on the analytical theory of heat at the beginning of 19th century and he completed his work in 1822 his work enabled him to express the conduction of heat in two dimensional objects in terms of the differential equation fourier series was occasionally used by euler and other 18th century mathematicians but somehow nobody trusted this series fourier established its important position in modern mathematics he also extended this concept into the so called fourier integral fourier gave a relation between fourier coefficient and fourier integral and later he discussed about fourier transform there were so many doubts about the validity of fourier series 
आवाज नहीं आ रही देर इज नो साउंड
टू इंटरवल माइनस फाइव टू फाइव बट पॉजिटिवली दिस टर्न आउट टू बी अ फंक्शन इफ यू डोमेन ऑफ अ फंक्शन टर्न आउट टू बी द इंटरवल माइनस फाइव टू फाइव एंड द रेंज ऑफ अ फंक्शन टर्न आउट टू बी जीरो टू फाइव सो इफ कोडोमेन ऑफ अ फंक्शन इज जीरो टू फाइव देन दिस एक्सप्रेशन रिप्रेजेंट अ फंक्शन सिमिलरली If the codomain of this function, this expression is interval zero to minus five, then also this turns out to be a function. So whether a given mathematical expression is a function or not depends upon what is the domain of a function and what is the codomain of a function. Certain expression may turn out to be a function for a given domain. it may not turn out to be a function for another domain similarly given expression may be a function with respect to another codomain it may not be a function with respect to another codomain as far as the third example x square plus 5 square equal to 0 is concerned this represents a function if it is defined from singleton 0 to real line y is equal to mod x which is a usual well defined function it takes all positive values as far as this representation is concerned mod x plus mod y is minus 2 if at all it has to be a function then its domain to be an empty set and its range to be an empty set but we know that to have a function you need two non empty sets so in any way this equation x mod x plus mod y equal to minus 2 do not represent a function as far as x is equal to cos y is concerned this expression represents a function only when it is defined on certain domain so let let us see these these two functions y is equal to cos x And x is equal to cos y. So, if you look at the curve y is equal to cos x, you can observe that corresponding to each value of x, you have unique value of y. But if you rotate this curve, you will get the curve below this curve, and you can see that if I look at this function as x is equal to cos y. this is actually it has to be a mirror image because this this represents a positive axis this represents a negative axis so if i if i consider the mirror image of it you can see that the function defined on whose domain is minus 1 to 1 and so it is the range is 0 to pi then in that case this turns out to be a function so if i consider a range as any any interval of length pi then in that case y x is equal to cos y also turns out to be a function so you can see that whether given expression turns out to be a function or not depends upon its domain as well as its codomain now let us define periodic function a function f is said to be periodic If f of x plus 2p is same as f x for every x belonging to domain of f, the least positive real value 2p for which the above relation is true is called the fundamental period or just the period of the function. We will see some examples of periodic function. The function f x is equal to tan x is undefined. For values of x given by x is equal to pi by 2 plus m pi, where m is an integer. Nonetheless, the function is periodic because for every x in the domain of the function, tan of x plus m pi is same as tan x. The fundamental period of tan x is pi in the second example fx is equal to constant for every positive integer 2p 
and for every x in the domain f of x plus 2p is same as fx equal to c. Hence, constant function is a periodic function. Every positive number is a period of f. Since there is no smallest positive number, the function fx is equal to constant has no fundamental period. In the third example, fx is equal to cos omega x. This function is a periodic function with period 2 pi upon omega. In the last two examples, fx is equal to cos m pi x by t and fx is equal to sin m pi x by t, we can observe that for every m integer, both the functions, they turn out to be periodic functions with period 2t. Thus, for both the sine and cosine functions, defined by fx is equal to m pi x by t and fx is equal to sine m pi x by t, both the functions are periodic functions with period 2t. Observe that here m is any integer. As you can see, these functions, they are periodic functions for every m and that is why we have countably many periodic functions. Naturally, the question arises, is it possible to represent any periodic function as a superposition of these sine and cosine functions? And the answer to this question is given by Fourier series. Before going to define Fourier series, we will define what do you mean by orthogonal functions. Functions f and g are said to be orthogonal on the interval a to b with respect to the weight function w if integral a to b fx gx wx dx is same as 0. And we say that these functions are orthogonal functions with respect to weight function w. We know that Chebyshev polynomials, these are orthogonal functions. We will show that sine and cosine kind of functions which we earlier defined, they also turn out to be orthogonal functions. Consider the collection of functions 1 cos n pi x by t sin n pi x by t n running from 1, 2, 3 and so on. So these are, this is a family of countably many functions. You can see that these functions are continuous. Not only that they are differentiable functions, not only that they are infinitely many times differentiable functions. So this is a family of continuous infinitely many times differentiable functions. These are countable in numbers. We can see that this family gives us the orthogonal family of functions. You can see that integral d to d plus 2p cos m pi x upon p dx is 0. For n not equal to 0, integral d to d plus 2p sin n pi x upon p dx is same as 0. So, Functions 1 and cos n pi x by p are orthogonal. Functions 1 and sin n pi x by p also are orthogonal. Integral d to d plus 2p cos n pi x by p cos n pi x by p dx is same as 0 for n not equal to 0. That means cos n pi x by p and cos n pi x by p also are orthogonal functions. Integral d to d plus 2p cos square n pi x by p dx turns out to be p for n not equal to 0. Integral d to d plus 2p sin n pi x upon p sin m pi x by p dx is same as 0. Meaning by sin n pi x by p sin m pi x by p also are orthogonal functions. Integral d to d plus 2p 
cos n pi x upon p sin m pi x by p dx also is same as 0 meaning by cos n pi x by p sin m pi x by p also are orthogonal functions. So we have seen that 1 and cos n, p, n pi x by p are orthogonal. 1 and sin n pi x by p are orthogonal. Cos n pi x upon p sin m pi x by p also are orthogonal and therefore this whole family consisting of 1 cos n pi x by p sin n pi x by p where n running from 1, 2, 3 and so on this consists of the set of orthogonal functions. Once I know that 1 cos pi x by p cos 2 pi x upon p cos 3 pi x by p cos n pi x by p sin pi x upon p sin 2 pi x upon p sin n pi x upon p and so on is a family of orthogonal functions. Question is, is it possible to represent every 2p periodic function fx as a superposition of these functions 1 cos m pi x upon p sin m pi x by p meaning by can I write down fx a 2 pi periodic function is equal to a0 by 2 plus a1 cos pi x upon p plus a2 cos 2 pi x upon p plus a3 cos 3 pi x upon p and so on plus a n cos n pi x by p plus dot 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 plus b1 sin pi x upon p plus b2 sin 2 pi x upon p plus dot 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 plus b n sin n pi x upon p and so on. The possibility of such expansion and their determination when they exist is answered by Fourier analysis. Suppose it is possible to write fx equal to a0 by 2 plus a1 cos pi x upon p plus a2 cos 2 pi x upon p and so on plus b1 sin pi x upon p plus b2 sin 2 pi x by p and so on plus bn sin n pi x upon p. So if I integrate both the sides between the limits minus p to p then we can see that integral minus p to p fx dx turns out to be a0 by 2 multiplied by integral minus p to p dx. We have seen that 1 and cos pi x upon p, 1 and cos 2 pi x upon p, in general 1 and cos n pi x upon p are orthogonal functions. Similarly, 1 and sin n pi x upon p, 1 and sin 2 pi x upon p, 1 and sin n pi x upon p also are orthogonal functions. So when we integrate these functions between the limits minus p to p, the value of integral turns out to be 0. And we have a0 by 2 multiplied by 2p to be equal to integral minus p to p fx dx or a0 is same as 1 upon p integral minus pi to pi fx dx. Similarly, if we multiply this whole equation by cos m pi x upon p and integrate this whole equation between the limits minus p to p, then as 1 and cos m pi x upon p are orthogonal, cos m pi x upon p and cos n pi x upon p also are orthogonal functions. Not only that, sin m pi x upon p 
and cos m pi x upon p also are orthogonal functions the rest of the values of integral minus p to p cos m pi x upon p cos m pi x upon p dx will be zero similarly integral minus p to p sin m pi x upon p cos n pi x upon p dx is same as zero and we will arrive at an integral minus p to p cos square n pi x upon p dx is equal to integral minus p to p fx cos n pi x upon p dx in the last slide we have seen that the value of integral minus p to p cos square n pi x upon p dx is same as p and therefore p multiplied by an turns out to be integral minus p to p fx cos n pi x upon p dx or an turns out to be equal to 1 upon p integral minus pi to pi fx cos n pi x upon p dx similarly if i multiply the equation right. fx is equal to right. 0 by 2 plus sigma right. ak cos k pi x upon p certificate me the kay maga bk sin k pi x upon p by sin n pi x upon p and integrate this whole equation between the limits minus p to p then since cos m pi x upon p sin n pi x upon p are orthogonal sin n pi x upon p And sine k pi x upon p are orthogonal functions for k not equal to n. Rest of the values of integral minus p to p, cos m pi x upon p, sine n pi x upon p dx are zero. Integral minus pi to pi, sine k pi x upon p, sine n pi x upon p dx will be same as zero, and we will arrive at integral minus p to p fx sin n pi x upon p dx to be equal to dn so in short if i integrate these functions between the limits minus p to p you will get the value of a0 if i multiply fx is equal to this power series by cos n pi x upon p and integrate between the limits minus p to p you will get the value of an and if i multiply this equation by sin n pi x upon p and integrate between the limits minus p to p we will get the value of bn since the function f cos n pi x by p and sin n pi x by p are periodic functions with period 2p we can represent a0 an and bn 
in the following integral form. While calculating A0, An and Bn, we assume that the series can be integrated term by term. But this is in general not true and that is why though it looks like that it is possible to represent a, every periodic function in terms of Fourier series, it is not in general true. As an illustration, we will find out the Fourier expansion of the periodic function whose definition in one period is given by fx is equal to 0 if x is between minus pi and 0 and it takes value sin x if x is in the interval 0 to pi. We know by definition of Fourier coefficient a n is same as 1 upon pi integral minus pi to pi fx cos mx dx which you can split this into two integrals integral minus pi to 0 plus integral 0 to pi and we have a n to be equal to 1 upon pi integral 0 to pi sin x cos mx dx. This integration turns out to be 1 plus cos nx n pi divided by pi into 1 minus n square. If the value of n is same as 1, then the value of a1 turns out to be 0. Similarly, bn turns out to be equal to 1 upon pi integral minus pi to pi fx sin nx dx which is same as 1 upon pi integral minus pi to 0, 0 into sin nx dx plus 1 upon pi 0 to pi sin x sin nx dx and the integration turns out to be 0. In particular, b1 is same as 1 upon pi integral 0 to pi sin square t dt and the value of this integration turns out to be equal to half. Thus, we have a0 to be same as 1 plus 1 divided by pi into 1 minus 0 which is same as 2 by pi. a1 is same as 0. a2 is same as 1 plus 1 divided by pi into 1 minus 4 that is minus 2 by 3 pi, a3 turns out to be 0, a4 turns out to be minus 2 divided by pi into 16 minus 1 that is 15 pi and so on. So you can see that if n is odd then a n is 0. So non-zero values of a n exist only for n even. Similarly, Bn turns out to be equal to 1 upon pi integral minus pi to pi fx sin nx dx. We can check that the value of this integral turns out to be 0 if n is not equal to 1. In particular, for n is equal to 1, B1 turns out to be equal to 1 upon pi integral 0 to pi sin square x dx and the value of this integration turns out to be half. So, if we substitute the values of a n and b n in Fourier series, we get f x is equal to 1 upon pi minus 2 by pi cos 2x by 3 plus cos 4x upon 15 plus cos 6x upon 35 and so on plus sin x upon 2. If I consider the first term of Fourier series, I get a function y1 to be same as 1 upon pi, which is somehow approximation to a function f defined by f takes value 0 on the interval minus pi to 0 and it takes value sin x on the interval 0 to pi. If I consider first two terms of Fourier series, 
I get a function y2 to be same as 1 upon pi plus sin x by 2 which approximates a given function f. You can see that this function matches well to the original function at 4 points. If I consider first three terms of Fourier series, then I get a function y3 which is same as 1 upon pi plus sin, t by, sin x by 2 minus 2 times cos 2x upon 3 pi. This function is another approximation of a given function f. You can observe that the value of function f matches with the value of function y3 at more than 4 points. In general, if we go on adding the terms in the Fourier series, and if I try to approximate this function n by first n terms, you can see that the distance between this y n and a given function f becomes smaller and smaller as n tends to infinity. In other words, the Fourier series converges to a given function f which is 2 pi periodic From the last example, we may feel that every 2 pi periodic function can be represented as some of Fourier series. But unfortunately, it is not true. It is not possible to represent every periodic function in terms of Fourier series. Let P be the class of all 2 pi periodic continuous functions defined on the real line R. Then, we can show that for every x0 belonging to minus pi to pi, there exists a function f in P such that the Fourier series of f at x0 diverges. Therefore, there is a need to study under what conditions the Fourier series will converge to a given periodic function. The answer to this question was given by Dirichlet. We know that the Dirichlet Jordan test gives us a necessary and sufficient condition for a function which is expressible as Fourier series. We know that if f is a 2 pi periodic function of bounded variation on the interval minus pi to pi, then Fourier series of f at x between minus pi to pi converges to f of x plus plus f of x minus divided by 2. Meaning by, if the function f is a continuous function of bounded variation, then in that case, the Fourier series converges to a function. For representation of Fourier series, you need not have a continuous function. If the function is continuous and is of bounded variation, then the Fourier series converges to a function. If the function is not a continuous function, then in that case, the Fourier series converges to the average value of the point of discontinuity. In particular, if it is continuous, convergence of Fourier series is uniform. And for this convergence, Bojanic estimated the rate of convergence of Fourier series of functions of bounded variation. So he gave a more strong explanation about the convergence of Fourier series. Till now, we were talking about a given periodic function, then you can express this in terms of Fourier series. Now we can pose the question in the other way. If I have a trigonometric series, something like sigma a k cos k pi x upon p plus sigma b k sin k pi x upon p, k running from 0 to infinity, my question is, when this series will turn out to be a Fourier series of some given periodic function f? What should be the conditions on a i and b i in such a way that the series obtained by using these a k's and p k's turns out to be a Fourier series of some periodic function. And the answer to this question is given 
with the next theorem. For the representation of trigonometric series as a Fourier series, we have two theorems. Let B and B monotonically decreasing sequence of positive numbers. B n goes to zero as n tends to infinity. Then the series sigma B n sin n x is a Fourier series of a continuous function defined on the interval minus pi to pi. If and only if n B n goes to zero as n tends to infinity. And the another theorem is about cosine series. It states that let a n be a sequence of real numbers such that a n goes to 0 as n tends to infinity and a n plus 2 minus 2 times a n plus 1 plus a n is bigger equal 0 for all values of n then a 0 by 2 plus sigma a k cos k pi x k running from 1 to infinity converges for all non-zero x in the interval minus pi to pi to a non-negative integrable function g. The series is a Fourier series of g. These two theorems club together gives us the answer to the converse given trigonometric series when this series will turn out to be a Fourier series of some function g. So as far as this representation was concerned, we have seen that a z periodic function is expressible in terms of sine and cosine functions. These functions are good functions, they are nice functions because all these functions are continuous. Not only that, these functions are infinitely many times differentiable functions. But the disadvantage of this function is that the support of this function is the whole interval minus pi to pi except the finitely many points. And that is why these functions, though they are nice functions, they are not useful functions as far as the reconstruction of functions are concerned. And that is why people thought about functions which are simple functions they need not be continuous, they need not be differentiable, but you can have simple functions and we can try to reconstruct a function by using simple functions. And thus the theory of wavelet transform came into picture which gives us the representation of given any function in terms of simple functions. You can have functions which are simple like state function or the hat function and you can express a given function need not be continuous as the superposition of these simple functions. So we have seen how to represent a given periodic function in terms of trigonometric functions and when a trigonometric function represents a Fourier series of some given function. So these are some references. I thank all the participants and I thank organizers for giving me an opportunity to present some work on Fourier series. So thank you one and all. Thank you so much, madam. Now I would like to request Mr. M. V. Pawar to propose out of thanks of this session. Hello. Hello. I am Mr. Mahesh Pawar. I am here to propose out of thanks on behalf of Department of Mathematics, Bhavan College, Vita. I want to express our gratitude to honorable guest, Dr. Thakar Madam, who has spared her precious time for us and graced the occasion and motivating and inspiring us 
by giving such a informative lecture on Fourier series. Uh, finally, our special thanks goes to all participants. Thanks all of you. Over to Zado, madam. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to request Mr. M. H. Babar, sir, to introduce a next resource person of this session, Dr. M. T. Gopne. Hello. Good afternoon. I am <coughs> Mr. M. H. Babar. Here to introduce our favorite teacher, Dr. Gofne M.T. Sir. He has completed MSc in Mathematics from University of Pune in 2002. Also, he completed his PhD on the subject, Some Aspects of Reducibility in Posets in 2013. He also qualified NET conducted by CSIR. Sir has 17 year experience of teaching in graduate and un undergraduate level. He is currently working as an assistant professor in mathematics at Department of Mathematics in Shivaji University, Kolhapur. Sir authorized five books, Advanced Discrete Mathematics, Linear Algebra, Numerical anal Analysis, Combinatorics. He published three international research papers. Also, he presented nine research papers at international conferences and eight research papers at national conferences. He has membership of various mathematical society, including Indian Mathematical Society, some Board of Studies of Mathematics, Shivaji University. Board of Studies of Mathematics, TC College Baramati. He is president of SUMS. He conducted near about eight national conferences and also attended 18 national conferences. Thank you. Over to Zawada Madam. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Now, I would like to request next resource person, Dr. M.T. Kofne, sir, to deliver her lecture. Sorry, his lecture. Hello, everyone. First of all, I am very much thankful to Principal Kilari, sir, and his team for organizing this webinar and inviting me as a resource person. Mathematics is a very powerful subject. It has wide applications in various streams like science, art, commerce, engineering, etc. Mathematics is a very useful and interesting subject, but to see Towards this subject, students afraid and they are talking that the subject is very difficult. The way of thinking that we have to change, there are so many things in mathematics which are depend on where you are working means in which domain a simple example if we take addition 9 plus 8 it it is 17 as well as 5 naturally question raise that how it becomes 5 but when we see a clock And after 9, if we count 8 hours, then it becomes a 5. That means we are working in Z12, that is modulo 12. 
such like there are so many interesting things and they gives different an answers in different domain today i am talking on boolean algebra and its applications and also in the last part i'll talk about opportunities in mathematics for this we need some basic informations in that we'll see relation set relation on set partial ordering partial ordered set total ordering linear ordering total ordered set and so on that we need to define boolean algebra in the first part we'll see basic information then some properties of basic basic properties of boolean algebra and then we'll see some examples related to applications of boolean algebra in electronic circuits there are so many applications of boolean algebra but we see some just for uh, electronic circuits how to simplify the circuits and so on first relation means any type of things that relate two terms in the set or two terms in the real life generally relation on set will see less equal similarly we can see parallel perpendicular and so on if we choose x be the set of elements and we define less equal relation on it that less equal means uh, if you choose a and b in x either a less equal b or b less equal a then we see that a, a is related to b then we'll go one by one to see the properties reflexivity reflexivity means the element relate to itself under the given relation antisymmetry means a relate to b b relate to a then this implies a equals to b that is antisymmetry and transitivity a relate to b b relate to c then we can say a relate to c that is transitivity a set here means all the sets and all the relations are satisfies reflexivity antisymmetry and transitivity is it true no suppose see the reflex and if you take a relation perpendicular Uh, sorry just uh, a relation less than means if you choose a natural number any natural number say five can we say five less than five no because five equals five we cannot say five less than five and therefore reflexivity fails there but if we take the relation less equal then it is we can write five less equal five similarly antisymmetry if two elements related to each other then they are equal means if we take two parallel lines a is parallel to b then b is parallel to a we cannot say that a equals to b because two parallel two different parallel lines are there means if we choose a lines parallel to x axis means cutting y axis at 1 2 3 and so on and we cannot say the line passing through 0 line passing through 1 line passing through 2 are the same lines and therefore antisymmetry fails there and transitivity similar way we can find out examples for transitivity also 
A set with relation satisfying in three means that is reflexivity, antisymmetry, and transitivity. Then we say this set is a partially ordered set. And then linear ordering. Either A is related to B or B is related to A. Then we can say there is a linearity property. If a set satisfies both the properties, linearity and as well as properties in three, then we can say the set is totally ordered set or linear set. Every set does not satisfy linearity property. Simple example for partially ordered set. If we choose a set and a natural number set and the relation less equal, that forms a post set. As well as it forms a two set, two totally ordered set. <coughs> Since any two numbers in natural number set is related to each other. Two ways of defining Boolean algebra by using lattice and direct algebraic structure. For going by using lattice, we need to define lattice. There are two different ways to define lattice. First, we can go from the poset and algebraic lattice. The second definition. A poset P is called lattice if supremum of AB and infimum of AB exist for all AB in P. And the second definition, algebraic definition, we need two binary operations, meet and join. Meet and join satisfies four simple properties, idempotency, commutativity, associativity and absorption property. Idempotency means A meet A equals to A, A join A equals to A. Commutativity A meet B equals to B meet A and also A join B equals to B join A. And associativity as usual just shifting of brackets a meet b meet c is equal to a meet b meet c <coughs> and absorption uh, that is displayed on the screen then we need complementation a is a complement of b if a join b equals to 1 and a meet b equals to 0 this Two definitions of lattices are equivalent. We can show it in a simple manner also. We are not going to see in details here. Just we want to see Boolean algebra. That's why we are taking this definitions. Uh, by using definitions of supremum and infimum in terms of meet and join, then we can see these two definitions are equivalent also. Then a lattice is complemented if all elements have complement. Simple example we can see <coughs> a power set of three elements. The diagram is uh, in the next coming slides. There is a lattice which is every element has complement. But we can, cannot say that every lattice is complemented. Since if we take a chain of three elements just, then middle element does not have complement because there does not exist any element which whose meet with that element is zero and join is one. <coughs> Distributivity property, A meet B join C is equal to A meet B join A meet C and duality the four join distributes over meet. A lattice is distributive if it satisfies distributivity condition for every triplet. 
then and only then we can say a lattice is distributive and then a complemented distributive lattice is boolean lattice again a simple example power set of any state with meet is an intersection and join is an union then we can construct a boolean algebra <coughs> then algebraic definition of boolean algebra we have seen the definition from lattice and now we'll see the definition of boolean algebra by algebraic way for that we need a non empty set two binary operations here again binary operations we need in a lattice we take join and meet here we are taking plus and star we need one unary also unary operation and two nullary operation that is distinct unique elements 0 1 unary operations means if we take operation on one element then we get one different element in that set simple way just complementation complementation is a unary operation binary means from two elements we get one new element then we need following properties following axioms a commutative loss distributive law that just different in the symbols only we have seen same property commutative law in mid join here we are writing in plus and star also plus, uh, distributive law in plus and star identity law that 0 and 1 works as an identity element complementation that we have written here boolean algebra is denoted by b plus star dash 0 1 6 1 same way and dash on d by a plus b means lcm of ab a star b is a gcd of ab and a dash is 70 by a our d is 1 2 5 7 10 14 35 70 this is graphical representation of boolean algebra with three element sets and power set of x this is what graphical representation of d here we can easily verify all the properties of boolean algebra in a lattice way as well as in a algebraic way here are some basic properties of boolean algebra just and see this properties are equivalent to the properties we are seen approaching from the lattice to the boolean same properties we are here also confirming in the new notations new binary operations plus and star adam potent law boundedness laws absorption law associative law this is important theorem representation theorem let b be a finite boolean algebra and a be the set of atoms of b then the mapping b to power set of a defined by f of x equals to a1 a2 and so on a r where x is equal to a1 plus a2 plus and so on a r is the unique representation of x as a sum of a of and power set of a is the set of power set of a an isomorphism here one concept remains to define that atom atom means the element that covers zero means in the diagrammatic representation here 
zero uh, one is the zero element of this diagram and the elements covering two one are the atoms here two five seven are the atoms ten fourteen thirty five are the coatoms they are not the atoms coatoms means covered by the largest element. in lattice or in the boolean algebra zero is the notation for least element and one is the notation for largest element in a simple way we can show this isomorphism this mapping is 1 1 on to homomorphism in a simple way if you just see the some properties we need here as every element in a boolean algebra can be written as a join of atoms because that representation is unique you can see in the previous example also if you take 10 10 is a join of 2 and 5 both are the atoms 17 this element is a join of 10 and 14 but 10 and 14 are the join of 2 and 5 and 7 and therefore 70 is a join of 2 5 7 in this way we can generalize this concept as every element in a boolean algebra can be written as a addition of here join is related to addition addition of the atoms and easily we can verify this theorem because one more uh, statement we are going to see here a finite boolean algebra has to rest to n elements for some positive integer n that means every power set contains a element to rest to the cardinality of that set if a contains n elements then power set of a contains to rest to n elements in the same way by previous theorem we are shown that boolean algebra is isomorphic to power set of atoms in the same way we can write the proof of this corollary also here again i take an example of d70 is the same thing that we have discussed here previously here i take a equals to 2 5 7 the atoms of d and then i construct power set of a and here see both the di diagrams d70 and power set of a they both are isomorphic structures because see one goes to 5 2 goes to singleton 2 5 goes to singleton 5 7 goes to singleton 7 10 goes to the set 2 5 14 goes to 2 7 and 35 goes to 5 7 and 70 goes to the a this is the correspondence between elements from d70 and power set of a here one basic property of boolean algebra see the relation a plus b dot b plus c dot c plus a here dot is the star for simplicity we are taken here dot is equal to a dot b plus b dot c plus c dot a if we take lhs of this and apply distributive law repeatedly and uh, use the basic properties of boolean algebra we can get the rhs of it similarly if one more properties down p q r means p star q star r plus p q r dash plus p q dash r plus p dash q r it also gives p q plus q r plus r p same way we take lhs simplify it and use the distributive laws and basic properties 
we get the RHS also. Also we can show these four expressions are equal by simplifying just uh, applying distributive laws and basic properties of the Boolean algebras. See when we see one, two, three, four terms here, they are looking like in a different ways, but when we simplify it and see they are the equal. We are not going, going to details in that simplification. From these things, I want to just say that any Boolean expression can be simplified in a different forms. Okay, Boolean expressions means any variable or any expression built up from the variables using the Boolean operations. Boolean operations, just we have seen that plus and dot or plus and star or from the lattice meet and join, the dash, these are the Boolean operations and Boolean variables means the elements in that set. Boolean function, any expression which is combination of finite set of symbols. Symbols means variables as well as operations. Normal forms, it consists of all variables means function with n variable then consists of all n variables. For example, x plus y x plus y dash. These are the two variables normal forms. Types of Boolean functions. Dejective normal form or sum of products. See this. Or name. Sum of products. That matters. If we go in details then we will see that sum of products. Complete dejective normal form. It contains all the combination of elements and its complements under the operations. Consecutive normal form or product of sums. Means we'll take product of elements and their sums. Sum of products means we'll take sum and then product of it and complete consecutive normal form. These are the things, examples. Dejective normal form x plus y plus x y dash x dash y plus x dash y dash and complete DNF dejective normal form it contains all the combinations see x y plus x y dash plus x dash y plus x dash y dash for two variables we can write in three variables also four variables and n, var n variables CNF consecutive normal form example is x plus y we are taking addition and their multiplications x plus y into x dash plus y and in three variables the second example complete cnf we are written here for two variables x plus y into x dash plus y into x plus y dash into x dash plus y dash we can convert any dnf into cnf and vice versa because if we simplify any DNF using basic rules of Boolean algebra and rearranging the terms it can be written as a CNF. Every Boolean expression can be converted to CNF as well as DNF. Boolean expressions means what we have written in DNF, they are all Boolean expressions only. Now we will go to the applications part. There are so many applications but because of time limit, I will just discuss one application, application to the switching circuits. Every switching circuit can be written in the form of Boolean expression. We can simplify Boolean expression by using properties of Boolean algebra. We can redesign switching circuit in the simpler form also. See one example. 
we have this complicated switching circuit we have written is Boolean expression using its switches names then we simplified it using the different laws of Boolean algebra and simplified form just x plus y dash and then its switching circuit is designed below in this way any switching circuit we can convert to the Boolean expression simplify it in simpler Boolean expression using various laws of Boolean algebra and find a simpler Boolean uh, sorry Boolean expression and convert it, it again in the switching circuit. Construction of switching circuits we wish we will take one example here. We wish a light in a room to be controlled independently by three wall switches located at the three entries of the room in such a way that flicking any one of them will change the state of light. Design a simple series parallel switching circuit which will do the required job. For that we name these three wall switches by x, y, z. We first construct a switching function f in the variable x, y, z for the required circuit. For the requirement of on f is that its value should change whenever the state of one of x, y, z changes. We arbitrarily assign the value 1 to f when all wall switches are on. Then changing the value of f whenever the state of precisely 1 of x, y or z changes. We obtain switching table for the switching function f as below. See this is table. I have taken x, y, z as a switch name and f of x, y, z as a function. I have chosen all switches on and value for it is 1, 1, 1. And then my function value is also 1. I will change the in the second stage I will change the state of z on to off and the value is 0 therefore the value of function is also changes. Similarly, I will change only the value of y, then also function changes. changes. Then I will change y as well as z, then again my function value is remains as it is because we have changed z and afterwards y, then it retains the value. Then I will just change x, then again my function value is changed then I will change x and z I have changed two x therefore value of function is remains 1 x and y I changed twice then again my function value is changed and in the last I will change 3 and therefore my function value is also changed then from this I will write the expression for f in the boolean expression for the first i have no change just x y z i have taken in series and therefore i have x y z plus for next one is i have x y dash z dash then my next one value is for x dash y z dash x dash means the complement of x and my fourth term is x dash y dash z we can simplify it in the following manner x into bracket y z plus y dash z dash plus x dash into bracket y z dash 
plus y dash z. The corresponding circuit is which will do the required job is in the next. In this way, we can design a switching circuit for the required job. And this gives the required conditions also. In this way, we can uh, design various circuits. In our daily uses, also we use this switching circuit style. Since everyone knows the Zena staircase, if we switch on button of the ground floor and go up to the first stair, first floor, and we change the state of button there, then light becomes off. The same application is used in that Zena wiring. Then, on the request of mathematics teachers in the college, I am going to talk on some career in mathematics. This is, uh, I have written some importance of mathematics that you can see later on. Uh, careers in mathematics, everyone says only there is a teaching job for mathematics. But that is not true. There are several job opportunities after doing mathematics that first so many people preferring that teaching job for that teaching there are assistant professors lecturer at junior college teachers as schools for assistant professor teacher at graduate and higher level science engineering diploma agri etc for that eligibility is msc net or set or phd lecturer at junior college eligibility is msc bed teacher at school level from 5th 5th to 10th the eligibility is BSc BA. There are temporary jobs available at engineering diploma colleges for non-set net candidates also. There is one opportunity at a research level, research degrees, MPhil, PhD or integrated MSc PhD also in some institute. MPhil available in most of Indian universities full time course approximately two years. PhD is available in universities and various research institutes such as TFR, IIT, ISC, ISR, ETC. Some universities also gives integrated MSc PhD programs. For these research so many institute gives their own fundings, research fellowships, government also provides research fellowships. For that research, some best places are TIFR, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai and Bangalore. They take a written test and then interview. Institute of Mathematical Science, IMSC, Chennai, that admits through NBH, National Board of Higher Mathematics. They take written exam as well as an interview. Then HRI, Harishchandra Research Institute, Allahabad. They take 
test and followed by an interview. An integrated MSc degree offered by Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Aisar Pune, Mohali, Kolkata, Trivendram, Bhopal, and also at National Institute of Science, Education and Research at Bhuneshwar. The Aisar admits students via IITG, KBPY, and through board exams for performance, while the NISER admits students to the national entrance screening test. Student can also opt for an integrated MSc in Math offered by University of Hyderabad, which admits students through a written test held in near early June. Various central universities also have the integrated program. All these institutes provide fellowships also. Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO also gives chance to work with them at scientist entry test. They conduct test and then by interview. DRDO set exam is of three hours duration consisting of two sections that is section A 100 questions and test candidate knowledge in the subject of their B, B Tech engineering discipline or MSc for science discipline and section B 50 questions to the candidate ability in analytical and qualitative skills current affairs and general awareness to the test aptitude and scientific knowledge required for applied research and development. This is website of DRDU. Research fellowships NEET GRF NBHM fellowship National Board of Higher Mathematics provides PhD fellowship through a test this is NBHM website. Project Fellows, Inspire Fellowship. The fellowship will be offered university first ranker in particular subject, PG level examination, as well as Inspire scholars who have secured aggregate marks of 65 and above at MSc, and also through GET. Banking and finance also absorbs the peoples from mathematics base. Various posts, manager, assistant, prob probationary officers are filled through Institute of Banking Personal Selection exams in government banks. And those who are BSc Mathematics or MSc Mathematics, they are easily crack these exams private banks also also insurance companies demands more chartered accountant bank managers income tax officers through this exam any graduate age 18 to 27 years and exam pattern is a mcq exams English, General Awareness, General Intelligence, Reasonings, Mathematics. IT Industries also wants BSc Mathematics people and MSc Mathematics people with some basic knowledge of these softwares, Oracle, Microsoft, Google. These companies also directly absorb the mathematics people and they train according to them. Also Bharat Pours take every year BSc Mathematics and BSc Physics peoples. Thank you. Thank you once again giving opportunity to talk with the peoples. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would like to request Mr. N M Jagta. 
head department of mathematics balwant college beta to deliver vote of thanks of this session afternoon everyone it is a privilege for me to propose vote of thanks on the occasion of one day national online webinar on applied mathematics conducted by department of mathematics balwant college vita in association with iqsc to begin with i am very much thankful to dear principal of our college dr rs more sir for his insights and support in the organization of this online national webinar thank you once again sir i am very much thankful to all the resource persons dr sarita thakar madam principal dr ms bapat sir dr machindra gopne sir for sharing their expertise and accepting our invitation to be the part of this webinar as resource persons i am very much indebted to you thank you once again then i am thankful to professor dithi devkate sir vice principal iqsc coordinator dm sandhi sir my colleagues in the department all the teaching and non teaching staff for their valuable guidance and support for making this activity successful last but not least i am very much thankful to all the participants research scholars students for being with us thank you all and with the permission of the president of the function i declare that the webinar is over thank you